For saboteurs were killed while attempting to infiltrate Russia's borderline Bryansk region, the Federal Security Service said. On October 27, officers of the Russian Security Service's Border Directorate for the Bryansk region jointly with units of the Russian Armed Forces and National Guard Service thwarted an attempt to violate the state border in the Klamovsky district by a sabotage and reconnaissance group, the Federal Security Service Public Relations Center said. For saboteurs were eliminated in a clash, other members of the retreating group were struck by artillery and sustained losses, it added. According to the Federal Security Service, the killed militants were presumably mercenaries. Foreign armament, gear, communications equipment and personal items evidencing that they belonged to third countries, a Canadian flag, a prayer book in Polish, a notebook with tactical training notes in English, were found on the eliminated saboteurs it said. A tattoo of the 2nd Battalion of the 75th Ranger Regiment from the U.S. Army Special Operations Reconnaissance Regiment was found on the body of one of the eliminated saboteurs, it said. Bryansk region's governor, Alexander Bogomaz, said on October 27 that an armed group attempted to cross Russia's border in the Bryansk region. Forces of the Russian Security Service's Border Directorate for the Bryansk region, units of the Russian Army and National Guard Service thwarted an attempt to cross the state border by an armed group, he wrote on his Telegram channel, adding that, the enemy was eliminated. The mercenaries that Russia neutralized in its Bryansk region include U.S., Polish and Canadian nationals, Russian Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Maria Zakharova told. According to law enforcement agencies, the mercenaries that were neutralized in the Bryansk region include U.S., Polish and Canadian nationals. These data are preliminary and will be updated, she said. Even the end of the so-called SVO will not be a liberation for Russian military personnel. No one will let them retire. Russian Z War correspondent Alexander Zladkov, who is close to the Kremlin, spoke frankly about this. According to him, the soldiers are so fed up with this bloody war that immediately after its end, mass dismissals from the army will begin. For the Kremlin, this will be a disaster. What will happen to the guys after the end of the SVO? And who will serve? A lot of men are planning to retire, professional soldiers. They've had their fill of trenches and all that. After the war, they'll be driven to the training ground. And rightly so. We need to raise a new army, a new type of army. And people will start to retire. And who will serve? The conscripts? Those with life sentences will reach the rank of general. I don't think they'll let everybody go at once. We'll have a problem with commanders then, Sladkov said. It should be noted that today there are no signs that Russian President Vladimir Putin wants to end the war. On the contrary, his army is persistently trying to advance and he is issuing unacceptable ultimatums to Kyiv to capitulate. Recall Russia's offensive in eastern Ukraine has been particularly bloody, with US intelligence reports of casualty numbers of up to 1,000 per day dead and wounded. This calls to mind the meat grinder tactics of previous Russian and Soviet military campaigns. The meat grinder is a collective battlefield approach that values high troop density and intensity to overwhelm the enemy. It is a uniquely Russian approach, nine decades in the making, consisting of a combination of two much older strategies, namely attrition and mass mobilization. At the heart of attrition is the notion of abundance. The opponent is physically and psychologically exhausted by the sheer force of numbers as wave after wave of cannon fodder are relentlessly deployed. Mass mobilization is the large-scale movement of troops to a particular location with the intention of overpowering the adversary. Neither approach recognizes the intrinsic value of individual lives. 
the meat grinder became embedded in Soviet military tactics. The phrase, quantity has a quality of its own, has apocryphal roots in Stalin's leadership during the Second World War. Key battles, such as Stalingrad and Kursk, involved the deployment of millions of soldiers, and the Soviet army eventually crushed the Nazi Blitzkrieg through sheer weight of numbers on the Eastern Front. A group of nearly 200 former North Korean soldiers who defected from the North Korea and are now living in South Korea are insisting on being relocated to Ukraine to begin a psychological warfare campaign against their former comrades. According to SCMP, each of these soldiers has between 7 and 10 years of military experience. Now they are seeking to use their insider knowledge of the North Korean army to undermine and demoralize the troops that will fight against Ukraine by exploiting their psychological vulnerabilities. We are all military veterans who understand North Korea's military culture and psychological state better than anyone else, said 69-year-old An Chang-il. He currently heads the World Institute for North Korea studies and is also an honorary professor at the Cybernetics Open University of Korea. He stressed the readiness of former soldiers for deployment. We are willing to go anywhere to work as psychological warfare agents through loudspeakers, distributing leaflets and even acting as translators, said An Chang-il. Lee Min-bok made his appeal directly to the Ukrainian government, publishing an open letter to the Ukrainian embassy in Seoul. The former military man asked President Volodymyr Zelensky to help rescue North Korean soldiers, whom he called cannon fodder. North Korean soldiers are there essentially as mercenaries, but we could go as volunteers on a goodwill mission. Simply, our presence in Ukraine could significantly affect the morale of the North Korean troops, says Lee Min-bok. So far, the Ukrainian embassy in Seoul has not responded to the proposal and the South Korean Foreign Ministry referred the matter to the Unification Ministry, which has not provided any comment. North Korean soldiers can find hope and courage in our presence in Ukraine, which will inspire them to cross the border in search of freedom. Lee Min-bok wrote in his open letter, the group's proposal is said to reflect the collective views of some 34,000 North Korean defectors in South Korea, many of whom are deeply concerned about North Korean troops being sent to Russia. According to An, if North Korean soldiers are captured by the Ukrainian armed forces, his group can persuade them to defect to the South. Most North Korean soldiers, including elite special forces, suffer from food shortages and malnutrition. The soldiers you see on TV parades are hand-picked units. They are the alpha top of the entire population. The former soldier added, 